I think Arlington seeks to be a very warm place. Um, I have found people here to be really thoughtful, um, maybe because of its town culture, different from cities, there's a lot of opportunities to get involved in committees and in making decisions in this community, which I think is incredible. I definitely think that Arlington has a strong sense of community. Affordable housing, right, it's essential. I th and I think a lot of people in, under in Arlington know this and understand this, that when you don't have affordable housing, you are cutting out a section of the population from being able to be in your community because they can't afford it. So the culture here is one of deep welcoming, inclusion, anybody, literally anybody, and they don't even have to live in Arlington, is welcome here. Um, and at HCA, what we, one thing we're trying to do is make sure that everybody has those opportunities. We can really create a town that that meets everyone's needs and where everyone has a, an ability to influence how this community evolves. And if someone needs help, we wanna figure out what we can do to help them. And then we also are starting to really think a lot more about how we not only help someone with whatever they're bringing us today, but how we help that person if they're interested get involved in all the decision-making that happens in town so that we can really create a town that, that meets everyone's needs and where everyone has a, an ability to influence how this community evolves. So Housing Corporation of Arlington is part of the overall Arlington Human Service Network to where there's 19 partners that collaborate to help the residents in the community of Arlington. Working with Paul and Renea and the Housing Corporation of Arlington is great because they do lots of things. I know that they help people with housing situations. And I know that they help people who are looking at job training. I know that they have lots of resources that that come with those kinds of things. So they, they're as social workers, they are very well connected to all sorts of other services as well. So I know that they're not just housing. There's so much more than that. And so it's great that they are a wealth of information and lots more resources than I can provide as my main goal is food. And we are here to support every single person who walks through our doors. Many times residents come into our buildings, people who aren't even residents who are looking for some type of services. So there are times when a person might come up to one of our service desks and say that they are looking for help in applying for um, housing support or looking for access to food. And so offering the social workers from HCA the opportunity to do that gives them a little bit more, um, a few more places to connect to the community and gives us the opportunity to offer people kind of a neutral place to connect with the social worker and uh, access services that they might not otherwise be able to access. Okay, so we have a financial education course that's being offered through our local banks. We encourage them to be part of that. So I think that when a person's educated on things they don't know, it makes them better. It makes them better and they know exactly what they're doing. The goal is to have them to be able to advocate for themselves. So they can bring that, even if you, they have a family member, say, wait a minute, I learned that from working with Renee and Paul. These are things I learned. And they can also bring it to a family member. Or they feel so comfortable, they bring family members to us. They don't even live in Housing Corporation Arlington, don't even live in Arlington. Because they feel so confident with us. So that education piece is, is really what we do. We do that self-advocate to help them help themselves. And we welcome with open hands, you know? We're saying, okay, you know, relax. We get them to relax. And when they build that relationship, they feel comfortable. They feel comfortable to even come out and say, yes, I need help with this. I need help for that. Whenever I sit with somebody and I, I tend to thank them more even when they thank me. I'm like, no, this is all you. It's yours. It's in you. It's not over. I have folks that come in and obviously I've totally realized that in, they're in a state of need. And that all they're thinking about is this and X, X, Y, and Z. And I try to come from a positive aspect from it, say, okay, we're working on your housing piece. You know no, we're not going to leave you from that aspect. If you did come to us and you said, 
my food stamps, they ran out and I don't have food. We're going to get you to Arlington Eats. While we're working on your job piece though, you're doing everything that you need to do. You're always going to have the supports right here. Let's look at it from a positive standpoint and how could we walk this together? Because I'm not going to leave your side. It's sustainability. So it all comes together. Well, there's a few things that come along with this because when that person ends up doing something that they love, it doesn't feel like a job anymore. Then that's when I slowly say to them, guess what? Right now you're working on your career. And they sit around and be like, oh my gosh, I never thought about this. So you're not only walking in to where you're signing up people for lessons. Guess what? Since you play the guitar now, go to the manager. Say, hey, do you mind if I start teaching folks? If I start being part of that teaching lessons? So you're moving up in your career at this point. And as you move up in your career, if you're doing what you're doing successful, it's longevity. And in terms of that longevity piece, the one thing I always tell the folks that I work with is we are collaborating, we're working together. So as soon as you walk through that front door, I'm there with you. As soon as you get your, the job search, I'm there with you. You get your position, I'm there with you. We're looking at the career piece, what's going on tomorrow. Let's look how you could possibly boom up. And even after your job, even after you reach your goal, you will always have my cell phone number. Give me a call with whatever need that you have. So that's the longevity piece of it. The great thing is I always tell folks, so I, I, I use this word at nauseum, is collaboration. So the one thing I try to build as well is partnership with employers. Because let's say, for instance, I have somebody who comes in who might be coming from another country or another town, they just moved to Arlington, and they used to work at the deli. But they could no longer work where they were working pre previous because one, they're in this country now, or they done moved away from their town. If I build a partnership with this person who's been working in the deli and that's what they want to continue to do, if I could build a partnership with a fellow supermarket, whether I'm sorry, with a local supermarket, whether it be Whole Foods or Stop and Shop or whomever, if I could build a relationship with that supervisor or the HR department or whomever it might be, and I look on the website and I see, hey, there's a deli clerk position open, I could then turn to that employee and be like, hey, guess what? I had somebody who just came to town. I've been working with them. They're very punctual. They've been very professional with me. They have a great resume. They've been a deli clerk for some time. They have the experience. And I see that you have a deli clerk position open. I was wondering, would they have an opportunity to, um, for, for an interview? Nine times out of 10, building that relationship with that employer, they'd be like, Paul, thank you so much. We've been looking to fill this position or this position has been so much turnover. Send this person's information over to us and then Boom, we collaborate S3, not only the person that I'm working with myself, but also with the employers. So with that relationship, I felt that you can't go wrong because we're all communicating at the same time. I think we benefit so much from affordable housing because if you want a sense of community, in, in my opinion, and, and I think science speaks to this, there's that adage or that truism in science that diversity actually makes things stronger. And I think it's true in science, just like it is in a population of people, that when you have diversity of, of everything, of income, of race, religion, gender, opinions, you know, any, any way you can think of that one person to the next might be a little bit different, you actually end up with a better place. You have more ideas, you have more people able to be involved and be creative and solve problems and, and not even solve problems, but do fun things like art. Um, like have people who make a documentary like this. I think, and I think Arlington, people in Arlington want that. I think there's a desire here. I've worked in some places and I've, I've been around some places where it just feels a little more closed and there's, there's a fear of having too many different things. Um, but I don't get that sense in Arlington. I think people here want this, this rich community and affordable housing helps bring that because you're not locking out a whole set of people simply because they can't afford the insane housing prices that we have in greater Boston right now. If you need any assistance or know of anyone that needs assistance, we're here. We look at bridges, not barriers. So if there's a language barrier, um, if there's a culture barrier, whatever may have you, please come to us. We will find ways. Um, I work very closely with the um, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. So again, if language is an issue, please just come to us. We don't look at things as being problems, we look at solutions. That's how we look at it. So we're here.